Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be showing off a bunch of secret strats and tricks that you could use in Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 1. These tips will include new ways to utilize the sliding mechanic, OP drop spots with guaranteed vault loot, informational balance changes, and even a way to help support your teammate while you're knocked. All I ask before I start the video though, you guys know I only ask for it once a season, is to please drop a like. By now you guys should know I just do not sleep when the new season comes out. I'm up all day making videos like these ones, so do me a favor, drop a like, and watch the whole video through. It's gonna help you out. Thus, let me know what your thoughts on the new chapter are. I personally love it. I think it's the best new chapter we've ever had. Not much to go off of, but yeah, without further ado, let's get right on into it. Alright, so to start off, we're gonna talk about sliding, as well as how to actually change some of your sliding settings. By now, you guys should know, if you hold your crouch button, you slide, you can build, you could edit while you slide, you could do a lot of funny stuff. You could even shoot and snipe, which I think is sick. Look at that. The FOV is really weird, like, half of it's in my camera when I aim down. Look at that, you can't even see my head. Regardless though, sliding is going to be a huge part of Chapter 3. It's one of the main mechanics. You can slide down his Wee! Really fast. It's just amazing. And a lot of people don't know that there's actually settings for it. So I'm gonna show that. In your Fortnite settings, you have the keybinds for it. So I'm on keyboard and mouse, and you can see if I scroll down, it says crouch in parentheses tap slash slide in parentheses hold. So this is just my normal crouch key. I did not double bind it or anything. The way you can change the setting is if you go on the top to the controller options. I know it says controller, and I'm on keyboard, but just go with it. You can see over here, even though my head blocks it, my head is gone. Slide hold time, and it says the number of milliseconds. 0.15 seconds, 150 milliseconds. This is my current slide hold time. That is the actual default, I guess. And then you can change it. You could put it all the way up to 0.25 seconds or to 0.1 seconds. The higher this is, the longer it actually takes. You can even read how long to hold the slide button to actually start sliding. So this is the max. This is going to be the longest it takes before my character actually starts to slide. So I'm going to press it right now. And after 0.25 seconds, it goes. I pressed it right now. It's not like a delay. I mean, I guess it technically is. It's only 0.25 seconds, but you really start to feel it once you actually change it. So controller settings, slide hold time. I'm putting it all the way down to 0.1, the lowest. This, I believe, is what Raider has it on. And you can see it's way easier to spam because I have it on 0.1. It takes 0.1 seconds from the time I hold down shift aka my slide key or crouch key. That's how long it takes to start sliding. And I know you guys can't really see it yourselves because you don't know when I'm pressing down my actual slide key. <laughs> it's a little weird, but trust me, it feels so much more responsive and just so much faster. Now, as far as recommendations go, obviously you can stick to the default. I would not recommend putting it any higher. I mean, the only benefit is you can kind of crouch spam with it a little bit. Uh, you see that? You can't really do that normally, but I mean, it doesn't, it's <laughs> Is there even a point in trying to crouch spam anymore? Oh, They ruined it no matter what. That's why me personally, I'm either going to play on the default of 0.15 or just on 0.1 where I can just spam it and I can slide fast as hell. Watch this. Well, this is downhill. Watch this. Um, that wasn't as cool as I thought it would be. Ugh. Peace? I have seen some different exploits with it, which I think are cool in theory, but like, are they really ever gonna work or be practical? I've seen people slide down ramps, break through them, get into boxes. Like, it's cool, but I don't really know. That's the slide mechanic though. That's how you can change the kind of different settings for it and make it more responsive, where if you want it more delayed, it's all up to you. And yeah, that's something not a lot of people know about sliding. Next up, let's talk about all the changes Epic made to getting knocked and to getting rebooted. Straight from the chapter 3 patch notes, when knocked into a down but not out state, you can now crawl faster to help reach the safety of your squad. You can also pick up items, sort your inventory, and open chests and doors. Do you guys know how big of a change this is? Not only does it make it way harder for your opponent to eliminate you, but it also makes you semi-useful while you're knocked. Just think about it. Once you get knocked, you're no longer just an annoying pest waiting for your 
opponent to either shake you or for your teammate to come pick you up. Oh, and by the way, they took out shakedowns. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Regardless, while you're crawling on the floor, knocked now, you could actually drop mats, you could drop ammo, heals, any good weapons you have. You could even crawl over to extra loot you see on the floor, pick that up in your empty inventory slots, and then drop that for your teammates. Like what? This is such a big competitive change, especially for team game modes like duos. That is what FNCS is in. So if you're not at least aware of these changes or utilizing them, you're going to be at a huge disadvantage. And speaking of new features, another one related to getting knocked is the overhaul that Epic made to getting rebooted. First off, the reboot van is way louder than in past seasons. Just listen to this. In addition to that, rebooting as one person takes a lot more time than it has in past seasons, and not to mention when you finally do get rebooted, you no longer spawn on the top of the reboot van. You spawn in the air, out of a rift, and you have to float down either to your teammate or away from the other team who will probably be rushing you because it's so dang loud. Now, to be fair, not all of these changes that Epic made to the reboot van were nerfs. Sure, they made it longer for one person to reboot their teammates, but I didn't say anything about multiple people. Ah! What I mean by that is in Fortnite Chapter 3, you can actually speed up the reboot van process simply by having another one of your teammates reboot alongside with you. You see on the screen there's a little hand symbol next to the reboot sign? That shows how many different people are rebooting at once. The more people that are rebooting at the same time, all of them obviously on the same team. That is going to drastically cut down the reboot time. Oh, and did I mention this also works for reviving people? The more people that revive you at once, once while you're knocked, the quicker you're going to come back up. It's kind of amazing. Thus, anytime you get knocked, or maybe anytime your teammate gets knocked, use the tips and tricks I just talked about to not look like a little Timmy. The next important strategies I want to talk about revolve around all the new weapon and item loot, so let's talk about them. In Chapter 3, the loot pool was completely wiped, except for like 3 heals, and it gained 7 new weapons as well as 2 new healing items. These weapons include the Ranger Assault Rifle, the MK7 Assault Rifle, that's the one with the red dot sight by the way that is insanely strong. There's also the Striker Pump Shotgun, the Auto Shotgun, the Stinger SMG, the Sidearm Pistol, and finally, the Hunter Bolt Action Sniper. I think the weapon pool is in a really weird spot right now. It's really, really simple, but if you go further in and you actually try out the different weapons, none of them are balanced at all. Beginning with shotguns, shotguns are ridiculously weak. The auto shotgun is probably the worst shotgun in the history of Fortnite. It's basically a worse drum gun. And then the striker pump shotgun, it's not bad, but it's not the pump. Onto the assault rifles, the MK7, like I said, is insanely overpowered. It has a red dot sight, meaning it's really accurate, but then at the same time, it has really good hip fire, it has a ridiculously fast fire rate, and it does good damage. Probably the most broken gun out of all of them, though, has to be the Stinger SMG. For some reason, this thing has good range, it is accurate, it does really good damage, especially from up close, and then on top of that, it has the fastest fire rate possibly ever. Due to these facts, my personal recommendation for this season is just to abuse the heck out of those guns for the time being. That kind of means not taking a shotgun unless it's like a gold striker pump shotgun. It also means always taking an MK7 assault rifle. That thing can be used up close and from far range. And of course, spraying your opponent to death with either two or three different Stinger SMGs. But Jarian, that's stupid. Is it though, little Timmy? The MK7 and the Stinger SMG are better than shotguns up close. Therefore, until Epic Games decides to buff shotguns, hopefully also nerfs the MK7 and the Stinger SMG. That is my recommendation as well as the current weapon meta. As far as healing items go, the new Med Mist item is probably the best white heal in the entire game. How it works is you spray yourself for 5 HP. That happens every like half a second, meaning 10 full seconds just like a med kit, it will do 100 HP. Except as you might notice, one Med Mist has 150 total HP. What this means is if you're at 1 HP and you spray yourself all the way back up to 100, you're going to have 51 extra Med Mist left over. Something else the Med Mist can do which not a 
lot of people realize is it can heal your teammates. To use it on yourself, you just press left click or I assume right or left trigger. I don't really know. But then to heal your teammate, you press the opposite trigger or at least on keyboard and mouse, you press right click. I actually was testing this and you could just spray it in a general area. If no one's in it, then you're just gonna waste it. But if you have like three or four teammates there, all of them are gonna get sprayed. All of them are going to gain HP. Last reason I think the med mist is so good, better than bandages, better than a med kit, better than the guzzle juice, which we'll cover in a minute, is you could actually use it while you move and while you slide. No troll, you could be 1 HP sliding down a hill, healing yourself with the med mist, and you could do that whole thing just as fast as a med kit. What? And then for those wondering, Guzzle Juice. Guzzle Juice is not bad. I really like IRL Guzzle Juice. How Guzzle Juice works in game though is you pop it. It basically gives you 2 HP every half a second or quarter of a second. It's not that fast, but it's not that slow. And you gain those ticks until you're full HP. The only kind of drawback of it though is if you take damage outside of fall damage by yourself, the Guzzle Juice will get canceled and you'll stop gaining HP. So while yes, popping a medkit will usually get you more HP in a shorter amount of time, you need to remember that Guzzle Juice is instant and you always feel the effects. Plus, you can stack a few of them in your inventory, not just one, and like I said before, it will get you to full HP as long as you do not take damage. Not too shabby. Still on the topic of new items, the Spider-Man Mythic Web Shooter is not technically in the game yet, or at least it's not supposed to be, but you actually can buy it at the NPC in Greasy Grove. From what I've read, the Web Shooter should be released in the next week. I'm pretty sure it's a bug that it's in Arena, it'll get taken out, but as you can see on the screen, this gameplay is from Orange Guy. The Web Shooter is actually insane. You could go around the map really fast, you basically become Spider-Man in-game, and from what I've heard, you could actually find it randomly in the river. Like, it'll just be floating next to you. Oh god. After that, the only actual mythic item in the game right now is the mythic MK7 assault rifle. I said before that this assault rifle just normally, like the green and blue version, it's already overpowered. So as you can imagine, the mythic one is even better. How to get it is you need to kill the foundation NPC, which is located at the sanctuary. He basically just walks around and you go up, you just kill him, he'll drop it after you eliminate him. Be warned though, this dude is bulky as hell. Not only does this guy have like two HP, but he also throws an energy orb at you, which if it hits you, does damage and pushes you back. So yeah, that's all the weapons and the loot pool. I guess I should also mention tents, even though they don't really work that well in Arena. Basically what they do is you can store items in them that you can then use for the next game. In Arena, they do not do that. All you can do is you can hide in them, you can pick them up and throw them to a new spot. They're not that useful, but they are cool for pubs. Just make sure you guys abuse SMGs, abuse everything broken, and please do not do it on me. I'm an old man. To finish off the video, I'm gonna rapid fire through some kind of random miscellaneous changes, and then I'm gonna finish with the seven vaults. Starting off on the random changes, there's actually Spider-Man webs all around the map that when you jump on them, act as bouncers. You don't take any fall damage, there's like a cool little web animation, and you basically bounce off. Another really cool thing in chapter three are the big kind of log trees. You can tell what they look like because they do not look like normal trees. Basically when you break them, they fall over and destroy anything in their path, including builds. Another thing that you guys probably are aware of are the winner's crowns. Basically, it's an in-game crown that you get from either winning your last game or from killing someone who won their last game or from killing someone who killed someone who won their last game. And it's kind of useless. All it does is it makes your name gold in the kill feed. You get like a gold aura in the starting lobby, but other than that, it does nothing. It's all for show. It's gonna get old really, really fast. Lastly, the seven vaults. That's literally what they're called. They are seven vaults all around the map. I'm going to show a picture of the map and where they're located. You can see that there's seven in total. I know the map is blacked out, but that's just an early picture and it shows where they're all located. In game, they basically look like little mini sanctuary buildings, but once you go into the basement, there's a vault and that has crazy good loot. Now, in order to actually open the vault, you need everyone on your team to be with you. So if you're in duos, you need both of you there. If you're in trios, all three of you. 
and then it's just gonna open. You're gonna find three IO crates, and yeah, it's kind of cool that there's seven vaults. They make for decent drop spots. Oh wait, that's not it though, because behind each vault, I almost forgot about this, there are three rifts. I'm not joking, behind each of them, you can just jump in and it will teleport you into the sky, just as how a normal rift would work. And for some reason, they are always there. You're welcome again. Those are all my tips and tricks. Overall, guys, those are all my best Chapter 3 strategies and tricks. I'm going to have a landing spot video coming out very, very soon, as well as a settings and FPS boost guide, so stick around for that. On top of that, if you enjoyed the video or you learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel somewhere down here, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone using code Jarian. I appreciate each and every one of you so, so much. Guys, like I said, please drop a like. I am so tired and I have to go edit this all night. I do it for you guys, though. Otherwise, that is it from me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.